there's no need to get tense. Relax, relax, condense. Subscribe, baby, subscribe. Welcome, I'm Flux Condenser. For a couple of years now, I've been collecting and repairing antique radios. And a month or so ago, my 14-year-old nephew said he was interested in having a vintage radio of his own. So I told him I'd look for something suitable. Soon after, I watched a YouTube video by Jordan Peer about a GE Portify speaker. I thought if I could hack one to receive Bluetooth, it might be perfect for my nephew. I went to eBay, and there were a few on offer. This one seemed to be in the best condition, so I ordered it. I noticed it had a white handle, and although I doubted it was original, I thought for a teenager it, it might be a handy addition. I'll let this pamphlet from the early 60s explain how the speaker works. Quote, This 10-speaker stereo can send high-fidelity music through your household wiring to any other room where you plug in this receiver speaker. General Electric calls this new idea a home music distribution system. It works like this. The console has a tiny FM transmitter, which broadcasts through regular household wiring. The portable 8-inch speaker is a receiver with its own loudness and tone controls. Simply plug the portable unit into any standard 110-volt outlet. You'll enjoy radio or phonograph music from the console in any room you choose. The SB24 speaker I ordered has a 6-inch speaker and no tone control, but it works the same as the speaker shown in the pamphlet. A large console would broadcast the sound from its radio or phonograph through the AC wiring as an FM signal, and the speaker would receive and amplify it. The speakers were available to receive either an A channel or a B. Our speaker is a B channel, but it doesn't matter much because we're going to modernize the speaker to receive Bluetooth. My nephew doesn't have a 1960s GE console, but as required by law, he does have an iPhone. I had promised him a piece of vintage tube gear, but when I removed the back panel, I was surprised to find transistors, not tubes. If I had read this label first, I would have known better. All the info I had seen on Portify speakers showed them with tube amps. This must have been a later model. Transistors or not, the speaker was certainly vintage, so I got over it and proceeded to figure out whether it worked. I powered it up slowly with my isolation transformer, variac, and current limiter, and there was the typical buzz. Fortunately, though, there were no shorts and the transformer appeared to be working. Next, I fed an audio signal into the circuit board and validated that the amplifier and transistors were working. I was encouraged to hear a nice dynamic sound. The speaker didn't appear to need significant repair, so I'd just need to fix the noise issue and add a Bluetooth circuit. I picked up this Bluetooth module from Amazon and, after some testing, decided it deserved a permanent home in the Portify. At only $23, I highly recommend it for your Bluetooth projects. Sound and signal are rock solid, and the board comes pre-built with jacks for DC, audio output, and auxiliary input. It works from 6 to 24 volts, and I had good luck using an old 7.5 volt wall wart. There was plenty of room, so I decided to mount the Bluetooth module and its power supply inside the speaker. For a clean installation, I used the Dremel to open the wall wart casing and extracted the power supply and got rid of the prongs. I soldered a barrel connector cable to the output and new wires to the primary. The power supply fit inside a small project case and I fed the AC wiring and DC output cable through the two holes. I mounted the Bluetooth board to the lid of the case and installed it on top. The barrel connector from the power supply plugged into the DC jack and the AC wiring was connected to the speaker's AC line input and switch. This way the Bluetooth module would turn on and off when the speaker turned on and off. The connections were soldered and then insulated with wire nuts. To connect the Bluetooth audio signal, I soldered a 3.5 mm stereo plug cable at the high and low points of the volume control on the PC board. To reduce noise, I cut the trace on the PC board so that the board's radio circuit was no longer connected to the amp input. The plug was inserted into the output jack of the Bluetooth board. I didn't have a schematic, but by following the traces, I could roughly tell which side of the speaker's PC board was dedicated to the amp and which was for the FM receiver. I didn't worry about any parts in the receiver circuit as it wasn't going to be used anyway. I replaced all the electrolytic capacitors to get rid of the 60 cycle hum, then checked the other relevant capacitors and resistors. All were fine. After replacing the filter caps, the AC hum was gone, but there was still a lot of interference noise. I remembered that Portify speakers pick up the FM signal from the power line, which acts as an antenna for the system. 
I figured that was probably where the noise was coming from, so I traced the signal path on the PC board. I found that capacitor C1 was where the radio circuit attached to the AC line, so I removed it, and sure enough, that completely eliminated the noise. Because of a ground loop, there was still a slight buzz if the plug was oriented the wrong way. The AC cord and plug were in good shape, so instead of replacing them with a polarized plug, I labeled the hot side and added a little info to the back, explaining that the plug should be reversed if there's any buzzing. Now that everything was working, I was ready to permanently mount the Bluetooth box inside the cabinet. First, I drilled out two holes in the box so that screws could pass from the top and out through the bottom. Checking that I had the correctly sized screws, I marked the cabinet and drilled two small pilot holes, being careful not to puncture the bottom panel. The Bluetooth box was then firmly screwed in place. While I was checking the bottom of the speaker, I noticed that the felt pads had worn through. I pulled the old tacks away and added four new rubber feet. For good adhesion, it's a good idea to clean the surface with a little alcohol before attaching the feet. The Bluetooth module allows for a wired auxiliary input, so I drilled out one of the vent holes in the back panel so I could run a stereo cable through. I used a strain relief for the cable and hot glued it in place. I also added this handy Velcro strap to keep the cable out of the way when it's not in use. The wired input works well and the module will automatically switch between Bluetooth and auxiliary, but you do have to disconnect the Bluetooth from your device before it will select the input cable. I mounted the PC board back in place, tidied up the wiring, and attached the back panel. I thought the project was complete, but after listening to the speaker more closely, I noticed that with certain music the sound was distorted. I suspected that the problem was how I fed the stereo signal coming from the Bluetooth module into the mono amplifier. Ideally, the left and right signals should be isolated a little from each other by adding a resistor to each channel's output. I simply soldered the left and right signal to the same point, thinking it wouldn't be an issue. I was wrong, so I disassembled the speaker again and rewired the unit using two 1000 ohm resistors. The resistors made a huge improvement in sound quality, so I put everything back together. I decided to give the speaker a good test, so I listened to it for quite some time. If volume is kept at reasonable levels, mid-bass and vocal response are very good. Without a tweeter, though, the high end is a bit limited. The speaker and amp stay well controlled, and there's no bloat or sag that some might expect from something this old. In that way, it sounds surprisingly modern, and overall, compares well to any mid-priced Bluetooth speaker. For sheer character, though, this thing's got them all beat. As I was enjoying some favorite music through the speaker, I cleaned the outside up a bit. A little lemon oil on the vinyl veneer and some polishing and cleaning of the handle and hardware did wonders. Do I really have to give this to the nephew? On that note, stay tuned for a demonstration of the speaker in just a moment. Thanks for watching, and if you're interested in repairing or modifying your own antique electronics, check out my channel. There's a multi-part series there that will teach you a lot of what you'll need to know. To get updates, subscribe and click the bell. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Here's the demo.